Okay, so I'm going to mention a couple of things before we start with the main topic. Uh, so I'll mention here Facebook, Instagram. I'm going to ask you what's going on with Instagram. I mean with Facebook. Did anyone hear anything in the news about Facebook in the last three days? Lost a, a little bit of change. Yep. So uh, let's take a little moment to look at something here. Money.msn.com. I don't recall if I've mentioned this site before. This is one of many financial websites out there. Uh, but but remind me, have I mentioned anything about like financially about companies, social media companies? If not, let's look at this. Money dot msn dot com. You can go look this up everywhere. You know, uh, 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 CNBC website, Yahoo Finance, uh, uh, Fox Money uh, website, whatever. But here's just one that I like to look at. So money dot msn dot com. It's a website about finance and the stock market and all of that. And so um, this is one place where we can look here. So there's various news articles and such, and the big article that was uh, a couple days ago was that Facebook lost like $150 billion in value. Not million, billion. But you know, they still have a few trillion laying around, so it's not so bad. But what you can do here is uh, on, this bottom, on this little search box at the bottom, not the one at the top, but the one right below the, the, the Dow ticker, right there you can do a search and we can look at the Facebook uh, stock so if you search here FB is their stock ticker uh, and uh, it's Facebook on the NASDAQ no not this Swiss version or the one from Milan uh, I'm gonna look at the American Facebook stock <clears throat> so today it's lost a value of a dollar twenty six so far and uh, if we look at it in terms of a week that is a steep drop off a cliff right there. So what happened with them? Well, why, why, you know, the stock market could be an interesting, complicated thing. Some people liken it to gambling. I don't at all, just because there is a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that is not like gambling, where you throw dice and you might make money. The stock market is not like that at all. There's too many factors in play. But you can read the... Uh, the news articles to see, well, why is a company doing well or poorly on um, in their stock price? And it was basically because I think it was that they didn't have enough growth as they expected. And companies are like sharks. They have to keep moving or they die. They have to keep growing or they die. And investors expect after, you know, eight years of a uh, bull market, they expect yeah, companies are going to keep being profitable. Companies are going to keep increasing revenue and all that great stuff, but it's cyclical. So it's not going to be going forever, and it might, we might be going into a negative period. But here we see with, with Facebook, its stock price value was going up. The company was more and more valuable, and then they announced, oh, we only, you know, we only signed up 2 million users instead of 6 million like we expected, you know, just picking random numbers. The investors freaked out and they lost 150 billion dollars in like one day because uh, again investors want uh, constant growth and such now yeah it dropped down it went it was at 217 dollars per share and then it dropped down to 174 dollars per share so those that had an investment in Facebook uh, you know, mutual funds, big corporations, and little people like us. If we had an investment in Facebook on you know that Monday, yeah, we lost we lost money. But you know what they say: buy low, sell high. And I'm not giving any advice or anything like that. But stock Facebook stock being this low could be an idea to start to invest in Facebook at this point. What would have been better was that you invested in it, you know, four years ago when it was at thirty dollars. But that was five years ago, so you never know. And um, you're seeing here since 2012, from $29 to $100 at, or $217, it's a big change. And even with the big drop in this week, you know, $175 today, that's still way more than it was worth five years ago if you had invested at that time. Now, of course, 
uh, investing in the stock market has a lot of risks or a lot of rewards and a lot of complexity and again I'm not giving any advice at all and then personally I um, uh, I, I remember uh, that the stock was going public and I had a chance to buy like at $35 I'm like, I don't like Facebook. I don't like the people behind Facebook. It's going to make me money, but it's not going to make me feel good to own stock in that particular company. Then when I saw it going higher and higher and it was at $50, it went up to like $60 or something and it came to back down to $50. i am like, hmm, should I go for it? It's down to $50. You never know. I said, no, uh, I, don't, I don't want to invest in that company. And so I went from $50 to $150. Um, so just something there. <laughs> Just something there. Yeah. One of the things that they were saying is that one of the reasons for the fall was that they can't be as profitable if they are dealing with privacy, and that that was an issue. Do you see? The, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think so. the The thing about these social networks is that if you deal with like a company like Coca Cola or Johnson and Johnson or Walmart, Walmart, they have very tangible things. All of this social media computer stuff is so intangible and so they make a lot of money off of these ads I'm gonna pay Facebook I'm gonna pay Twitter I'm gonna pay YouTube for my stuff to, to reach more people so uh, in order for all of those ads to work so well I need to know a person's age income location what favorite movie etc so that I can market to them which is what we've talked about before in this class when we talked about Facebook and targeting our, our boosted posts, well, I told you, as a person, I don't like that it knows so much about me, but as a business, I love it because I can reach the right people that will care best about my product. But that is exactly that concept about the privacy. And for a long time, I think people didn't really think about it, care about it, know about it. And personally, I hope people do and take charge of it, that this is your private information. Uh, and we give it away to these companies willingly and oftentimes also unwillingly or unknowingly. So yes, I do think that part of the uh, reason for the fall is that, that now the European Union, they enacted tougher privacy rules back in May. These companies work in Europe too, so they have to adhere to that. Uh, there's the scrutiny about possible uh, election meddling and all of that. That's under scrutiny. There's the constant privacy snafus. I don't know if it's ever happened to you personally, but I thought I set my settings to private, and next time I check it, it's not as private as I remember setting it. And there was another glitch in the system. So I think it is going to uh, impact their bottom line, And but who knows? Uh, that is one thing you can't really predict um, in the stock market, what will happen on individual companies. So... Just out of curiosity, does anyone own any Facebook stock? No? Yeah, you do? Cool. Can I go to your yacht? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, actually... Oh, sure, sure, yes, yes. Now, I might, I guess if I think about it, I probably do own some Facebook stock because I have, like, you know... Um, ETFs and mutual funds and such. So there's probably a few shares in there. But uh, for myself, for fun, for my like mad money, um, a few years ago, I bought uh, some Twitter stock. So back when I used to like Twitter more, um, I bought some Twitter stock a few years ago when it was at about $40 a share. And then so today, uh, it's at 34 Now, uh, they're, they're also having a drop because they were back at 40 uh, just a few days ago. So who knows if it's all like a domino effect of all of these social media companies and privacy concerns or uh, congressional investigations. But I bought Twitter when it was, you know, like $42 and I saw it go up a little bit and then I, I was there through the really bad times when it went down to, what is that, $14 a share. So I was like, should I share these? Should I, should I sell these shares, keep them? I don't know. But again, this, I only bought like, you know, five shares. So uh, I wasn't really hurting a lot, but I saw that, and then they've kind of turned it around in the last year, except for like three days ago. So it was coming back to the price that I had bought it for, and then uh, I guess this week they had some bad news as well, and it's kind of skidding lower this whole day right there. So there's that. Um, 
we're going to cover Snapchat in a little bit. Snapchat is a publicly traded corporation where you can buy uh, stock in Snapchat. And today it's also down. And throughout the week, um, they they had that. So yeah, maybe all of these. Uh, maybe all of these um, social media companies are sort of having a domino effect of one social network, the biggest one, having trouble. And so Snapchat there, but from the beginning I was like, no, don't get into Snapchat. Uh, I had a friend who said, uh, I'm so tempted to get into Snapchat, it's only at like $20 a share, $25 a share when it debuted last year. And she says, I'm thinking of selling a few of my shares of Apple stock to get into Snapchat. I'm like, uh, don't do it. It's not going to be a good investment. Their, com their, their product is like, um, their social network is so niche, uh, which we'll talk about today, that it might not be useful to you. And I think she did sh sell a few shares and she bought some Snapchat um, shares and I don't think that's a good investment. But today also, it's down. Um, it's no longer listed, but LinkedIn was a publicly traded corporation. Data no longer available. Uh, but their shares were also at about $200. So that was a very uh, pr a valuable one. But it eventually got bought. I don't remember if I mentioned it last time we talked about LinkedIn, but someone bought LinkedIn. Who bought LinkedIn? Microsoft. Microsoft bought LinkedIn for a few billion dollars, like three years ago. Uh, so you can't buy LinkedIn stock on its own anymore. And the one that people have been waiting for a long time, let me just check, it's not there, Pinterest. People have been waiting for Pinterest to go public, but there was like this big heyday like two or three years ago about all of these companies going, all of these tech companies going public, and none of them quite worked out. Uh, it wasn't as big as the 2000 crash, but a lot of tech companies that debuted on the stock market a few years ago um, didn't do that well and so today we're seeing that that uh, I guess in general today something's going on with the markets uh, when I was when I started to talk you know five minutes ago the Dow was down 17 points and now it's down 48 points so maybe I should stop talking about it <laughs> <laughs> well it should go up the president had a speech this morning Sure, that'll make it go up. Okay, so um, stocks falter as Intel and Twitter lead a rollover in tech. Okay, so Intel's not doing well and Twitter's not doing well today, and that's driving everything down. Uh, is it earnings season already? So just this one is money.msn.com, but it's one of many financial websites you can keep up to date with this stuff at. But I like checking this one out. So um, I bring this up because uh, for good or for bad, the value of these companies is based on something very immaterial, something not real. A company like Johnson & Johnson makes toilet paper and soap and, you know, frozen dinners or whatever. A company like uh, Exxon is in oil and, and energy and such. A company like, um, uh, I guess like a bank, at least deals with money, transactions and such. But companies like Facebook and Instagram and um, Twitter and Snapchat, what, what's their product? What do they deal with? I think um, I was probably Warren Buffett that said something like, I don't invest in a company if I don't understand what it does. And these companies like Facebook and all of that, well, they're basically nowadays relying on marketing. They're relying on ad sales. Uh, TV, <laughs> classic television, over-the-air television is free. You plug in an antenna, you get free TV. But what is not the way it's free is because there's ads. Every you know five minutes, there's an ad to sell something, and then back to the program. Soap operas. Uh, legend is that they got their name because in between the, the the shows, they were you know selling products like soap. So, a company like Facebook that doesn't really have a real product, what its product is is selling ads to one person so that they can create an ad for another person to buy their product, which then is another ad for another person. 
So who knows if it's a house of cards or it is a sustainable thing. And just, you know, one week or one day with bad results in the stock market doesn't mean much. You know, in a whole week, that's how the general stock market was, the Dow. It was up in a month. It was up in a year. Well, in a year it was up. And then economic turmoil at the beginning of the year. That's kind of weird the rest of the year so far. In five years, it was up generally. And then if you look at the stock market, and this is the whole all the way back to 1920. What is this little thing right here? That's the Great Depression. That's the stock market crash, 1929, when people were jumping out of buildings, killing themselves because they lost their wealth. Well, not quite 100 years ago, that was the stock market. And then now, the value of it is all of this. Uh, here is the early 2000s tech crash. Here is the um, you know, mid-2000s crash there. Uh, here's Obama's presidency, here's Trump's presidency, and in general it's all up in the last hundred years, and there's of course bad periods. If you look at the stock market right here, it's like, well, the stock market's not a good thing to invest in, you're going to lose money. If you look at it here, the stock market's not a good thing, you're going to lose money. If you look at it right here, the stock market's not good, you're going to lose money. If you look at it here, that's good, that's good, that's good. It's a long-term thing. And again, I'm not a financial guru or anything like that, but I'm really glad I educated myself in this stuff a few years ago uh, so that it kind of helps me in my future. I'm going to retire someday, and um, investments and money management and all of that is something important to, to know about. And it ties into this class because nowadays social media is a big part of uh, every industry, and it could weigh down... On, on the whole stock market if things don't go well. Let me see, what are they saying about Twitter? Oops. Twitter posted quarterly earnings that were in line with expectations. However, the stock dropped more than 14% as the company also reported a decline in monthly active users, a key metric. Okay, so they have some some value that you determines foster homes how many people counties. are using Twitter per day. I can take care Apparently, of myself. Apparently, um, when you're 18, reported some Give sort of decline. You can see the full Give story somewhere on you. the site. How many? You know, they expected 300 million people, 300 million users to use Facebook this, is this Billy quarter, Batson. and only 290. Make sure you make him feel at home. But they expected it at a certain height. And when but they don't meet expectations, it. when any company doesn't meet expectations, it often then hurts the stock price, at least temporarily. Dude, just messing around. So you look at me and you're like, why so dark? You're disabled foster kids, you've got it all. So if you profit, could have one superpower, what would you pick? Everybody chooses flight. You know why? So they can fly away from this conversation. So any Little, questions on, on this? A little, little off topic, but any questions on stocks or anything like that? I've got a couple good books right here. Um, it's um, what's the name of it again? Oh, here he goes. The Little Book of Common Sense Investing uh, by Jack Bogle. Uh, this one is free audiobook with a trial, so you can hear it for free or get the hardcover for four dollars. I actually have a signed copy of that from the author. Uh, pretty quick book, but it's very good about um, these concepts of uh, investing and keeping your head when everyone else is losing theirs. Uh, so that's one. Um, what's another one? Um, I'm going to put this in the notes if people are interested. But we've got... Say off topic books about investing. I don't know if we teach any classes on this at this college, but that'd be so useful for people. Uh, I gotta check uh, now. Key. 
Tokyo, yeah. Uh, there are paid classes. Okay. Tokyo. His book. Uh, okay, this one. Elements of investing. Easy lessons for every investor. And there's another one that I, forgetting the author. But those two plus this other one that I'll think about in a little bit. Big names in the world of finance and uh, sensible finance for regular people. Uh, I recommend those two. And <coughs> there's another one. I probably won't find it because there's a million books on investing. Um, investing five, five, something. Uh, oh, here it is. The five mistakes every investor makes and how to avoid them by Maluk. So pretty straightforward books, not a lot of like technical jargon in them. Uh, good um, intro to this whole world of finance and investing for any age. And uh, those are the three that I recommend and I've got those. I'll put those in the notes if you're interested. Uh, the Little Book of Common Sense Investing, The Elements of Investing, and Five Mistakes Every Investor Makes. Any other? Oh, and then just if we want to be high tech, um, we have InvestorJunkie.com, and we have um, SeekingAlpha.com, and nerdwallet.com so some other books online um, the thing about uh, um, like the basics of finance and investing is once you kind of get like the basic idea about it you kind of see the same tips and such over and over because they work and you'll often see a lot of those uh, concepts you know from those books in these sites as well are any other questions on that? Okay, so I want to uh, recap a little bit about um, Instagram from last week. If you weren't here last week, we had a substitute. And I'll do it this way. Um, I'll, I'll write here a few questions and then I'll answer them but does anyone have any questions on what was discussed last week regarding Instagram mm -hmm. well jump in your time machine go back to last week and come back to that class <laughs> what's that Really short. Okay. Seems to be learning a bit with this. Okay. Uh, let me try to answer that. He's going to talk to us about stories. Uh, wasn't sure about ads. Uh, well, what we could do is we could have my version of the lecture of Instagram today and put Snap push Snapchat one day forward. There's enough time and what I've scheduled for the various classes. Uh, we've still got a part three of this class. Um, I'm fine with pushing one topic, uh, you know, one meeting later. We could do Snapchat next week um, and kind of do my version of the lecture this week if we want. Uh, I think it'd be best to vote on it. So uh, Instagram again today or Snapchat today. So you can vote more than once and please vote so that we know what to do here. So if you'd like to do my if you'd like to do Instagram again, another lecture on Instagram today, my version of it, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, ten. Uh, how many uh, would uh, like to move on to Snapchat today? Less than ten. Okay. Is there an option for both? Like a condensed version of 
Instagram so that we can maybe hit a little bit on Snapchat? Um, like, probably, yeah, because if you've already gotten the basic ideas of how to set up Snap, uh, Instagram and such, then yeah, I guess we could do, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so we can focus on. Uh, so we're not listening. I mean, we do. We got some basics. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. We all set up it. Most of us set up Instagram accounts. Okay, that's good. Besides, I think Snapchat is falling out. Hmm. So it could be uh, the thing about Snapchat when we get to that is that it, it's very niche it is very uh, specified with a certain target audience and yeah. if your target audience is that it's amazing yeah. but if your target audience is not that it might not be the best so uh, okay we'll do condensed Instagram and then some Snapchat yeah so maybe focus just on the business part like yeah. to, to yeah. your point shark dog with the ads and all that stuff mm -hmm. and, and I'm, not, I'm not sure Snapchat is as relevant for business well, uh, the thing that we are seeing with most of these networks is that they could work for the right business. Every any network could work for the right business. Uh, there are some networks that work for quote unquote every business, but there are some networks that focus on a certain demographic or certain business. Now, uh, remind me of this. What is this hashtag over here? Did you guys use it? Oh, that's the first post we did on Instagram. Okay. Well. Uh, We'll look at that. So did all of you then manage to create some Instagram account? So he, he made us create an account and then engage the, the group to follow each other mm -hmm. and like post the first picture and everything. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's good to so that. Yeah, I, I saw some I saw some basic notes in there. Okay. So here's what we'll do. Uh, let me let me do this. So you saw that basically uh, to use um, Instagram, to use it on a device. I'm going to show you a super secret way how to use it on the website. Because if you visit Instagram.com, if you visit Instagram.com, what you can do here is either create the account or log in. But once you log in, you can't do very much on Instagram. So if you try this, if you created your account last week, go to Instagram.com. And log in with the account you've created. I'm going to show you the secret part in just a moment, but log in to Instagram on the website. Right, so the the interface on the Instagram website is pretty limited because they are channeling me over to the app. They're saying go get the app on your phone or tablet. But I'm logged into this account here. Uh, if you're interested in seeing this account, it's Instagram.com slash the VMCINK. But I use this as a testing account for these classes. 
and in this account uh, I have various you know pictures and things that I show for these classes and I've got some post followers following so I'm, I'm following accounts okay I'm on the website I can see the posts of the accounts that I follow so this got posted and I can like it I can comment and okay I see that and I can like it or comment I can follow other accounts I I can do those actions about being active that way now I'm looking around however and I don't see the button to post a new picture I don't see the way to share a new photo or video you have that on the mobile phone on the mobile device on the interface on Instagram dot com it's designed more for consumption instead of creating I believe I mentioned those terms before uh, consumer versus creator a consumer uh, takes in content a creator puts out content so everyone by default on most of these social networks is a consumer you create an account because you want to consume you want to see a photo a video maybe you're going to reply to someone well we want to be creators we've got a business we need to create content to promote our business so the Instagram.com website is focused on consumers the mobile app is focused on creators so I need to know how my phone works I need to know how the app works then I can take a photo or upload a picture or a link and it's so uncomfortable to type on this thing you know I wish I could do it on a real computer but as we're seeing here on the Instagram.com it's limited to that big thing about there's no button to actually share anything or post anything well, I'm going to show you a super secret way to use Instagram in which you do have the ability to to use it more like a real device. Look at that. I've got the button to share now. I've got a button to upload a photo just like on my device. Well, what did I do? I'm going to show you the super secret uh, way to use Instagram. Now this depends on your web browser so just to all be on the same page here if you're in anything else like Internet Explorer or Firefox or Safari leave that and go into Instagram on Google Chrome so if you're on a different browser quit it but then go to Google Chrome and log in again and then I'll show you this secret power user way to use Instagram.com if you use the developer mode developer mode device simulator of a web browser Google Chrome for example you can trick Instagram.com into thinking you're visiting on a mobile phone and then get most of the features of a mobile phone like posting or such as posting which is a very very big one because just by going to Instagram.com I don't see a button anywhere to upload my photo I can look at people's photos I can like people's photos and reply to people's photos I can follow people but I don't see the big thing about sharing that great photo that I took I, I don't have I don't have the way to share that photo that I designed in Photoshop if I want to put in one of these photos if you see people's photos that they have text on it and cool filters and special effects they might have designed it on their on their computer and then transferred it to their phone somehow and then uploaded it to Instagram and that is a kind of tech savvy move 
Well, what I'm going to show you here is also kind of tech savvy, not super complicated, but um, I'll show you here. So you should be logged into Instagram on Google Chrome. Um, on the uh, on the screen on an empty area of Google Chrome, uh, right click, and you'll get the option Inspect. All the web browsers have a version of this, but I want to show it to you on Chrome so we all look at the same thing. So on an empty spot, not on Mick Jagger, but on an empty spot, right click, inspect. This will pull up a scary looking panel on the right side that is basically full of code. This is the code of the website of Instagram, behind the scenes about the, the website's code. You can do this on every website, you know, if you're over at google.com and I do the right click inspect, it'll show me the code that google.com is made out of. Well, I don't know what the code does, but there's the code. Now, the, this is the developer's console. People use this when they make websites. So I'm very familiar with this. Um, as I've said, I teach this, but I'm also part of a company that we do this. We make websites, we do social media, etc. So this developer's console is very useful for me to create a website because I can read the code, I can edit the code, I can do interesting things here, uh, even on um, even on Instagram's website. Hey, look at that! I hacked Instagram and now it's got a red background instead of white. Well, this developer's console also has the ability to simulate a mobile device because I need to test my website on a mobile device. And the way you activate that simulator is right here. There's a row of, of tabs up here, and there's an icon of a mobile device, a tablet and a phone, toggle device toolbar. If you click that, then what you'll get is the, sc the screen might change, might, might change looks a little bit. But then at the top here, it says responsive. And there we can say, simulate me visiting this website or any website on an iPad, on an iPhone, on a Galaxy Android phone. And I've got more of them listed there. Let's try that. Turn on that toggle device toolbar and then change from responsive to any one of these. I'm going to try an iPhone. I don't know, let's say I have an iPhone 5. Then, just to be sure it fully works, click reload up here to, to reload the, the, the website into memory. And then Instagram will say, welcome, iPhone user. Have a good day. So I get all the icons that I would see on my mobile phone. I get the home button. I go get search. Uh, where are, what are my notifications and my account and so forth? And the most important one down there at the bottom, post. And oh, look at that. Little circle represents my finger tapping on the screen. So. I click on that search, I get that search screen that you probably saw before. Um, I can scroll with my mouse wheel, or I can click and drag with my finger. I can go look at my account over here, I can go look at my notifications. So uh, some, some classmates followed us here, followed me here, thank you. And then the most important one right here, share a photo. Now this assumes you've got a photo on your computer to upload, and we've got a few that I can play with in the pictures folder. In, the, in your computer, on the pictures folder over here, I've got some sample pictures. Maybe you don't want to upload these for real, but you know I've got these photos, and I can take one of these photos. I don't get all of the photo editing capabilities on my phone. It does still have some limitation. But I'm seeing here, I've got the photo, I can position it, I can show it full size. I have some of those filters, not all the filters. There's a lot more filters on the device. But here's a lot of them. I like X-Pro, but it's, it's not here. Uh, we'll do Moon. Or I can go to Edit. Edit doesn't have anything either. Under the mobile device, under Edit, you get even more control. You get the ability to saturate the photo or just do a lot of changes. So it's not, it's not completely exactly like a real device. But the big idea is that I'm able to share a photo, filter it up a little bit.
add my text, hashtags, location, and so forth. I don't have the ability to further cross-post it like you do on the device. On the device, it also would let you just send it to Facebook or other networks. Here it doesn't. Summer retreat in our castle. Hashtag blessed. It does pop up there when you're using hashtags to tell you here, these hashtags being how popular they are. Um, were, were hashtags uh, covered last time? A little bit. So hashtags, as usual, are these keywords that you can add to your posts. They are like the topic of your post, and every hashtag, every photo with that hashtag is sort of linked together. So if someone sees a certain photo of something with a hashtag, they click that hashtag, all photos with that hashtag appear. That's good and bad because my photo that I'm going to add blessed, hashtag blessed to, people can find it because if they're looking for that hashtag, mine will appear. The bad news is that's a very popular hashtag with 95 million posts, meaning that mine's going to get lost in the crowd because people are going to use that hashtag often and new stuff will be appearing and it's chronological somewhat. So when I shared mine today, I might get some visibility today, but then tomorrow when you know 40 new or 40,000 new uh, posts have been made with that hashtag, I'm going to get buried down deeper in the results. So we'll make the note over here. We've, we've covered hashtags uh, also with Instagram, but to recap, because uh, hashtags are most popular on Instagram and Twitter. So hashtags. An active link of a keyword that connects your photo, your post, with everyone else using that hashtag. Example, a person clicks the hashtag, clicks or taps the hashtag cookie, and your photo plus everyone else's with that tag shows up. If it's a popular hashtag, you may be lost in the crowd. back up to this idea here. Um, use this mode to type your descriptions a lot easier and to upload photos you've edited extensively on your computer. Does anyone have any experience with doing any web design, writing code on websites and such? Okay, good. Um, do either of you then use that developer's console in your web browser much? Okay, good, good. That tool has been getting better and better, and Firefox has it also, but um, especially for this device simulator that when that was added to these browsers that was amazing because then you could really um, you could really simulate well I don't have I don't have my website uploaded I don't want to put it on the real internet yet to test it on my phone I want to use my um, my laptop to check it and I've got a simulator which will be close enough you can even do something like this you can turn it sideways if you click this little turn button right there, you can look at the website sideways. Uh, I'm going to look at it on an iPad. 
So it's going to be just a larger form factor. And we've got these other ones. If you go to edit, you've got these other ones. Like if I want to be uh, an ironic hipster, I'm going to look at it on my Blackberry. Yep, that's how it would be on the Blackberry. I think I remember reading a few months ago that officially the use, uh, the demographics of usage for Blackberries has reached zero. Now that still means there's a few thousand people using it, but statistically there are like officially zero percent people using Blackberries. Remember back in the day, Blackberries were so famous and those little keyboards, and uh, President Obama had one and wouldn't let it go, and then now they're like, what's a Blackberry? Mm. So um, that was the that was the big pro tip on on this using the web browser to simulate a mobile device to use Instagram. We'll talk about uh, other uses of Instagram for business in a moment. But questions on this uh, secret developers mode for using Instagram? Yes. So the best use for this maybe if you have especially if you have a photo on your web on your that you want to use or other things like computer that you really want to use and have them already saved and stored. Uh, yes, exactly. If I use Photoshop to design some of these photos a little more complexly, putting text, putting photos side by side or something, yeah, the best use for this tool, because it does have the limitations on some of its features, is simply to upload a photo from your computer. And have it already ready to go so you don't need yeah, exactly. You don't need to use the filters. I put a black and white one there, but you can upload it as is because I've already got it ready from my computer. Yes. Would be too much trouble to outline the steps of how you go? Yeah. No problem. Let me do that right now. So let me put it back how it was. So basically, I'll do that right now. But what, uh, what was your question before I do this? I was just going to ask: Is there a way to get around uh, uh, not being able to post a live? No, that they've got that set up that um, you, you just you just can't do it. So the the point there is that if I add you know Victor.com sales, that will not be an active link. The only place you can put an active link is in your biography up here. So what people often do, the only way to get around it, which is very clunky, is they make their post. They, they put the link in the post, which is not clickable, but then they say, link in bio. Some people will say, well, what does that even mean? But most people will say, oh, okay, let me look at their biography right here. I see the active link. I'll click on it. The onus is still on the person to go out of that screen to the screen where this is at, and then click on it. And it can only be one link at a time. So at the moment, Instagram limits that, that no, they, they don't allow you to put active links in any of your posts, except for your biography here, and only one at a time. But you can still drag and copy and paste it into a browser. Yes, exactly. So if I'm looking at someone's post here from the web browser, yeah, I can, you know, if that were the, if that were the link, I can sure. copy it and then paste it into the browser. That's a lot more difficult, though, or perhaps somewhat difficult, more difficult on the device, where most people are using this app anyway. OK, so steps to set up uh, simulator mode. Uh, open uh, Google Chrome. Visit Instagram.com. Sign in. Right click on an empty spot of the background. Select inspect in the developers console panel at right find the button find the button called toggle device toolbar it then at 
left above the website, change responsive to a device, iPhone X, Galaxy S5, etc. Reload the site. And then now you have a simulated mobile device. It works on all sites. Yeah, this works on all sites. So right now I'm, I'm looking at Instagram simulating a Galaxy phone. Well, I can go to anywhere else, google.com and it's in this mode like a mobile device. So on any site I visit now, it, it thinks I'm on a mobile phone, so it loads the mobile version of the site. So can you do any damage while you're speaking here? No, all of this is temporary. This, this is a temporary sandbox for editing because, um, yeah, I can... In theory, I, I can alter the code of a website, but it's not permanent. It only alters it t temporarily. It only alters it temporarily as I'm in this mode. When I exit the mode, it will um, go back to normal. Will this allow us to use it on our iPads? It should. That's a sort of a different issue because it is a mobile device already. However, there's no official iPad app for Instagram. You have to download the iPhone version. So when you're in your app store, it says, show me apps for iPad only. You change that to say, show me apps for iPhone or iPad then you can get the iPhone version to use on your iPad. It's not designed to be great on the iPad, but it'll run on the iPad. Uh, so I would do that instead of trying to use the iPad simulator here, because this is still going to be limited. And if you need help with that, we can look at your device to show you how to do that. But basically, for tablets, there might not be an official tablet version but you can probably get the phone version, which will run well enough on your tablet. So yes. if I had a great picture that I wanted to, that was only on my computer, but I wanted to upload it to different social media sites, mm -hmm. could I get into this developer mode and then switch to different social media sites? Could I switch to yeah. Instagram and Facebook, and, like you were just switching to different websites? Yes, so right here if I... Yes, yeah, so right here I'm looking at Twitter in the regular desktop mode, but then I just switch over to developer mode, and then I I can look at I can use Twitter see how it already changed the interface. So yeah, you can do that exactly. Uh, on uh, I can I can do that now. It's sort of overkill because Instagram is the only social network really that limits you on a computer. Without being in developer mode, in Twitter, I can upload a photo. I can do anything from the main Twitter.com. Facebook, too, I can do everything yeah. from a computer. It's only really Instagram that you need to trick it into thinking I'm on a mobile. So, any other questions on this? Um, You just turn. You just X out of, de of developer mode. Yeah. If you exit that, um, yeah. Just turn that off completely. Then you can refresh the screen, and it'll go back to seeing you as as a desktop. See how all the icons down at the bottom disappeared. You cannot do video from the desktop version. I did that, that video on the phone. So you, you cannot upload a video that you have on your computer. You cannot only upload a photo to edit minimally. But the big idea is that you can upload a photo from the desktop. 
Any other questions then on this developer mode before we talk more Instagram for business?